Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good evening. Recording from my office at the Faculty of Economics and Management, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, the National University of Malaysia. Our topic tonight is on counter countervailing duties and anti-dumping duties. The first one, countervailing duties. Tariff imposed in retaliation against export subsidies. Whereas the second one, anti-dumping duties, tariff levied against a foreign producer that dumps their products either at lower cost or at lower prices than they're selling in the home markets. The first one, countervailing duty. Uh, this is a case of United States. So American companies, they are facing, they, they feel that they're facing unfair trading practices by foreign country or foreign companies will complain uh, about the export subsidies to the United States Department of Commerce. So United States Department of Commerce will investigate the claim. So temporary tariff will be applied if uh, the United States of Department of Commerce uh, did, uh, find out, uh, establish there's in fact export subsidies by foreign uh, companies. So, and then uh, the International Trade Commission at the state that was previously was U.S. Department of Commerce. Now, the U.S. Trade International Trade Commission will determine how much material injury caused by the export subsidies. And then, uh, so tariff will be levied to the amount of the subsidies. If the subsidies is a uh, hundred. Uh, dollars, so tariff will be hundred dollars uh, a unit. So tariff import tariff will be levied against the foreign products to that amount of hundred dollars uh, per unit to eliminate the impact of export subsidies. So duty will be removed when foreign export subsidies are eliminated. Second one, anti dumping duties. Tariff levied against a foreign producer whose prices on exports to the United States are below average total cost of production, selling below cost in the United States, or who sells to the United States market at a lower price than they sell in the home market. So selling at a lower price than they sell in their home market. So for the companies that bring the complaint of dumping to the United States Department of Commerce, they must include evidence of dumping, material injury, for example, uh, the amount of sales loss uh, and the amount of profit loss and also job loss in the company. And the link between imports and injury. Economists support anti-dumping laws that address predatory pricing only because some companies uh, complain or to the for the sake of getting protection so economists will not support uh, anti-dumping duties uh, initiated by uh, American companies for example for the sake of protection from foreign competition economists will not support that economists will support only if this anti-dumping laws will address predatory pricing. What is predatory pricing? Uh, pricing by foreign competitors, uh, competitors they are trying to monopolize in the market to become a monopoly uh, exporter. So monopoly is against the principle, against the principle of free competition. So uh, if anti-dumping laws will correct that, so economists will support that. So, economists support anti-dumping laws that address predatory pricing. So, let's look at, for example, uh, American companies, I mean, American government uh, imposed anti-dumping duties or, or uh, countervailing duties. So, we're going to use the same graph for either case, for either whether for uh, remedies for product dumping or remedies against subsidies. We're going to use the same uh, graph. Okay. 
product dumping or subsidies will dumping or subsidies will lower prices in various industries at the same time increasing increasing consumer supplies on the other hand if there is remedy tariff equal to the margin of dumping reverses trend rising prices to the original level under a fair trade scenario let's look at the graph here this is a canadian steel industry uh, canadian iron ore industry upstream this is canadian auto industry downstream uh, that uses the steel from the uh, steel industry so let's suppose this is uh, canada uh, demand this is demand curve for canada of steel and supply curve for canada suppose uh, korea south korea is doing dumping so south korea can sell at a low price uh, by dumping at 500 uh, dollars per ton so as a result supply in canada is only 100 demand in canada 400 so import is 300 uh, tons of steel imports this is unfair trade okay and let's look at what happened to the canadian ore uh, industry and canadian auto industry at the unfair uh, trading practices originally here this is the supply of the iron ore and demand of iron ore because of dumping by korean companies uh, prices will go down when prices will go down in the iron ore this is upstream okay uh, we're talking here about different effect of dumping onto the upstream and downstream uh, industries in the in Canada. For the upstream, uh, which is all more uh, raw material upstream, the impact of dumping is that because of the prices is going down because of the influx of uh, steel from Korea, prices will go down and with the prices going down, uh, the demand curve for the iron ore, we're talking here, the demand for iron ore decreases. This is steel, this is iron ore, the raw material. The demand for the raw material which is iron ore decreases because the demand the demand curve is moving to the left because of the prices uh, going down. Why? Because uh, American uh, uh, consumer of steel can buy cheaper from Korea. They can buy cheaper from Korea. So imports from Korea. That's why they're not using the raw material from, from uh, Canada. The Canadian can buy cheaper from Korea so the demand curve for the raw material the ore industry reduces moving to the left so this is the impact the production also as a result the production decreases from QO to Q1 that's the impact on the iron ore whereas different impact the opposite impact on the auto industry in Canada. This is downstream. Because of dumping by Korean uh, companies selling steel to Canada, uh, Canadian auto industry will benefit. They can buy cheaper uh, steel to make cars. Cheaper steel from Canada, uh, Korea. So, the supply curve of the Canadian auto industry moves to the right with the lower prices because of low price coming from Korea. So 
production will increase. So this is the impact. So let's go back here. What happened to the uh, welfare? Consumer welfare, because of dumping by uh, Korean companies, you can see here, consumer surplus increases by A, B, C, D. Producer surplus loses A. Consumer surplus, consumer gains A plus B plus C plus D. Producer loses A. So, producer complain to the uh, Canadian producers of steel complain to the uh, Canadian government to impose tariff uh, or, or anti-dumping duties on uh, steel from Korea. So that will that kind of remedy will bring up the curve from SK1 to SK0, bring back. So this the impact will bring back this the curve of DC to the DCO DC1 to DCO and will bring back to the uh, original level that's the impact of uh, anti-dumping duties or countervailing duties you must remember uh, countervailing duties is on the export subsidies anti-dumping duties on the uh, dumping so that's it thank you very much for watching assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh